It's already been a year and a half since Alliance Battle Legend came out, and it is, and by extension, Alliance Battle Extreme, still two of the best game modes in Marvel Future Fight. The return on your investment is among the highest of any game mode, and it creates a cyclical pattern just like World Boss. You build characters up for this game mode, and as you get better in the game mode, your scores go up, your rewards go up, and then that allows you to then build up more characters to go even further and push even higher. Not only that, but also alliances basically thrive on having ABX and ABL scores. So if you're going to be in an alliance that cares at all about the game, you almost certainly need to have some level of understanding and investment into this game mode in order to make yourself an attractive recruit for potential alliances. Even if you eventually want to focus on something more PvP oriented like Conquest or even the, the Hallowed Alliance Tournament. So I decided it's been about six months Let's uh, finally update the ABX ABL charts. So let's hit it up, boys. This is one of the most rewarding game modes in Marvel Future Fight, and I feel like I don't glaze it enough, and I really should be glazing it more. So if we take a look at the list here, I know it's pretty overwhelming. It has been revamped. It has been updated. But these are all of the metas for scoring as high as possible, as high as you possibly can, as of 9.9.5. Now, we have no idea what the next update, the anniversary, is going to bring. I'll highlight some characters that I think maybe have a shot of being dethroned for some reason or another. Um, but in in, uh, in essence, what you want to focus on here are the score goals that you're aiming for. And I've highlighted like the easy mode, which is the green stuff, and then sort of the harder stuff down here. And then also, you want to look for characters where you can double and triple dip. Because some characters are just used so frequently that they represent such a such a high value of return on your investment right so let, let's talk about this here we have um obviously a lot of seasonal uniforms that is probably the the one big drawback to abx and abl at this point we have abx over here and then we have abl um over on this side here but what i do want to highlight are characters that are not seasonal and actually the the, the character that I, I sort of wanted to not necessarily make this whole video about, but I, I really wanted to highlight because of Black Swan is Dr. Octopus. Um, because I ragged on this uniform so hard when it came out last year. It's been it's already been a year since this uniform came out. And it continues to pay dividends to players who invested in Doc Ock early. Oh man, you are laughing all the way to the bank. Because not only does he continue to dominate all of the combat villain days... Right, and all of the other uh, combat human male days where you can't use someone like a gladiator because he's not human. Um, not only does he dominate those days, but now he's amazing for Black Swan because of the fact he's a combat and she's speed, and the fact that she has this shield that you have to penetrate and you have to rack up a number of hits. And of course, his whole shtick is about refreshing his um, pat, his you know his his tier four passive, his tier four ability refreshes all of his skills, sort of like Luna's old ability, which allows you to just snowball with tons of hits. So. I did want to highlight uh, Doc Ock, but he's obviously not the king of ABX and ABL. Taking a look at the true king and queen of ABX and ABL, the entire alliance battle meta, it has to boil down to Luna Snow and Magneto. So I'm actually going to highlight them in red. It might be a bit jarring for you guys, but it looks pretty cool. And it does really hammer home the point that these characters are just insanely valuable. Um, for ABX and for ABL, they represent the pinnacle of scores for all of their days. And they are, you know, among some of the only characters who can easily hit the max score um, on their respective days. So, yeah, it really goes to their flexibility and it goes to their, you know, how easy they are to play. And also how many different combinations of teams you can use with them based on the number of supports you have. Because Luna really doesn't need a leadership. <laughs> That's how powerful she is. And then um, Magneto, because he's self-buffing lead, means you can surround him with so many supports. Whether it's villains like Enchantress and, Mag and Mysterio. Or it's heroes. You know, Coulson now applies to uh, to villains, right? Cyclops, Dazzler, etc. So those two are just insane. As you can see, we and as we go along here on the list, they just pop up so many times. Um, but the list doesn't just include those because I know they're seasonal uniforms. I know a lot of you are probably kicking yourselves like, "Oh man, I missed out on this. I missed out on that." Um, I don't think there's a good alternative. I will say I, I don't think there's a good alternative to either of these characters right now, and I don't know when there will be. Um, it's been a long time right since luna and magneto were released and yet they're still at the top i mean it hasn't been that long for luna yet but it's been a very long time for magneto um, and there aren't that many other blast villains male villains left like we just saw ebony come and go he's not going to make a dent in in magneto's case right there are obviously a lot more speed female heroes but 
again, then again, we've already had quite a few of them tier four. Shadow Shell, Gamora, um, uh, Spider Gwen. So who exactly is going to take the crown away from Luna? I have no idea. But yeah, having one or both of them on your roster absolutely makes, as you can see, ABX and ABL so much easier to handle. And I would say if you don't have a chance of getting either of them, then I think you do need to consider heavily investing in Gene from a PvE perspective. And I think it's actually a better proposition right now than ever, mainly because we've seen more and more PvP characters come out with Silver Surfer Tier 4, then Thanos, and they've really put a dent in Gene's stranglehold on PvP. So I think, especially if you're pushing or you want to look into pushing for ABX and ABL, Gene represents a lot of value. And especially if you're trying to make up value by not having Magneto, for example, or not having Luna, you can at least plug in Gene for all of the days where there's no restriction and you can still get a like you can easily plow through even with, you know, so so cards. If you slap her with like a mighty rage, you can just plow through um, to, you know, 12, 15, 18 million um, pretty, pretty uh, consistently. So, yeah, I would say Gene sort of depends, right? If I think if you have Magneto and you have Luna, uh, I think Gene can easily swing to being PvP, especially if you're into PvP. But I think if you don't have any of those seasonals, then Gene becomes, you know, a massive, massive value pickup. Um, another massive value pickup, which I already glazed over, like glazed on a little bit, is obviously Dr. Octopus. I think he's amazing. And also uh, Gladiator. Gladiator, again, not necessarily as much as the ones we've already mentioned, but Gladiator now is he's the best combat hero. But he also, for ABL, represents the best alien male hero. Now, you are going to need to build up some supports to really get things working and get the ball rolling for him with Beta and uh, potentially Ronin. But he definitely slaps. He's not too difficult to play. And, uh, you know, he kind of he kind of rocks it. One character that I would sort of caution you against building up for ABL specifically, um, and maybe ABX as well, is Loki. Um, and I, although he is listed there for that day, you can notice that he's not listed anymore for any of the ABX stuff. I think Loki's time has sort of come and gone for ABX. I'm not saying you can't use him. I'm just saying that there are much easier options, right? Much characters that are much easier to play, much more consistent. You just go in one run and you get your 15 million and you're out or your 12 million or whatever the case may be. Whereas with Loki, you know, if you have a bad run for whatever reason, you have to reset the, the, the you know, the mobs are doing some shenanigans. Um, a lot can really go wrong for you with Loki. They, they've affected it. They, they've improved it a little bit and they've affected his consistency a little bit by taking away the striker uh, skill, which is the checkbox at the bottom when you're queuing into a match. That's really good. Um, I can show you what this looks like right here. It's this down here. Use striker support attack. You just always have that unchecked for Loki. That really does help him. Um, but I still think it's a, a very expensive and, and sort of high investment type character because unlike most of the other characters on this list, pretty much all of them, Loki doesn't really shine m like a lot more than Thanos or a lot more than some of these other characters, even like Ghost Rider, Black Bolt, etc. Um, unless he has a brilliant rage. So it's a very, very tall investment to really make the most out of him. You're not going to really get that much out of him if you just go with a regular rage or if you just go with a mighty. Um, similarly, I would say just to just to be cautious of some other characters if you're you know looking to make specific investments into ABX, ABL. Um, Rogue, I would say, is one, as, although I really like her, Cyclops is a, or Cable is another, but Rogue more so um, could be replaced, right? We you know, Cable could be replaced as well. We know there's gonna be a Deadpool movie, right? Um, he, he's not necessarily going to be Deadpool's not gonna turn into a blast type, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying that, you know, there there is a the, the, the possibility for mutants on the horizon, right? With the Deadpool movie, with other content in the future. So I'm not really sold on their value long term the way that I am with other characters that can already hit these very high milestones or who were very recently introduced. Um, it's less likely that recent introductions to ABX and ABL meta are going to be replaced versus characters who have already been there for a while. Um, they're much more likely to be replaced. Another one that's a bit questionable, although I'm currently on the fence about it right now, is Captain Marvel. Um, Captain Marvel, it, it, this this day is really interesting, Universal Female Hero, because it's basically just been a flip-flop over the years between two characters, Scarlet Witch and Captain Marvel. And that's it. And that's it. It was Captain Marvel, then it was Scarlet Witch, now we're back to Captain Marvel. And who knows, maybe we're going to go back to Scarlet Witch one day, maybe it's going to be this year, maybe it's going to be next year. Um, there are obviously other universal female heroes in the game. They're not the only ones. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that as far as the devs are concerned, those are the only two characters that get ABX, ABL worthy 
buffs. Um, but again, the reason why I would caution against Captain Marvel, besides from what I'm saying right now, is the fact that she really isn't used that often for ABL. And especially for players who want to make the most out of their investments, if you look at the rewards for ABX, they're not bad at all, right? Especially if you can aim for 13 million. I think 13 million is really where players want to uh, focus their, their, your, their scores at a minimum because it's going to give you both of those team up collection boxes so you can start collecting those tokens. Um, and really, you know, at this point, the, the small tier three chest is not that good. It's just 50 of a random tier three material. Um, and then, but for, you know, for the ABL one, you really want to aim for 12. And, you know, if you don't know already, 12 million ABL is much harder to hit than 12 million, 13 million um, of ABX. Way, way harder. And unfortunately, you know, Captain Marvel, characters you mentioned recently, Captain Marvel, Rogue, to a lesser extent, Cable, it's not as easy as uh, for them to hit 12 million as it is for some of these other characters like Luna, Magneto, Jean, Dr. Octopus, um, Brilliant Rage, Loki, etc. Sure, there are players who can hit those scores consistently with Cable, etc. Absolutely, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that for the average player, it is much more difficult. And it's, it's possibly impossible, especially when you consider having a low team-up collection, which I think a lot of the veteran ABX, ABL players forget because they max it out and they got their 35% pierce and they're running around. 13 14 million and then you're like oh you know how come your score is so bad with cable and it's like well yeah i only have three percent pierce not uh, not the extra ten percent so that actually does go a long way the pierce the attack um etc but yeah that's essentially uh the stuff that i wanted to highlight in particular i updated the rewards as well for abx and abl as you can see there and then i updated all of the teams i also updated the strikers so this is an interesting topic that doesn't get enough uh discussion but essentially for ABX and ABL, Ghost Rider is the best striker for your tier fours. But for ABX and ABL, it's a bit more complicated after Ghost Rider. So if you're using Ghost Rider as a character, which means he can't strike for himself, or if for whatever reason you don't have Ghost Rider seasonal uniform, um, Black Widow is often a better striker uh, as an alternative to Ghost Rider than anyone else. And it has to do with the fact that Black Widow does her third skill, which has a damage proc, and it just has a very large burst damage effect, which is very nice. Especially if you build your Black Widow, if she's tier 4, etc. If she has an energy or a rage build, um, she actually hits very, very hard. In ABL, it's a little bit different. You actually want to go lean more towards Thor if you're not using Ghost Rider. Or in some cases, you actually need Thor, because Thor is a great striker for Ghost Rider, first of all. So that's sort of funny there. Um, but also Thor gives you shock and a lot of characters do require shock as as strikers um, for example you know Magneto if you're not going to switch to um, for example Cyclops in certain situations um, to apply shock or I, actually I don't know if Cyclops is Phoenix I don't think Cyclops is Phoenix 5 has shock I think it's only the newest uniform um, then you do need someone like Thor as a striker to apply shock for that particular canceling uh, week of, of ABL so it's something to keep in mind if you're looking for other tier fours and you're looking for additional sort of related value. Um, strikers actually add a lot of score. And so if you tier four a character, I mean, there's no, I don't, I don't need to sit here explaining why you want a tier four Ghost Rider. But on top of all of his other value, you're also getting, you know, an extra 500k, maybe an extra million, maybe not a million, maybe an extra 500k added to your scores every day when you're using tier fours and you can pop off with, um, with Ghost Rider as a striker rather than someone else, someone weaker. Um, finally, I wanted to highlight down here sort of some of the forgotten days of ABX. Um, Mystique, obviously amazing, but in my opinion, still too expensive and sort of suffers from the same issues that I talked about with Captain Marvel, where there's not really value outside of ABX. There's there's zero ABL days for Mystique. And, you know, taking her to 80, taking her to tier four is a very expensive price to pay when you can just go ahead and get Green Goblin, his Red Goblin uniform, right? And that one also doubles as a leadership and a support for any other content you want to put him through right now i know mystique has a little bit more value now at tier four if you want to take her into black swan but i don't really think that's enough to justify that the humongous price difference uh, and cost difference so i would say mystique is really only for the diehard um, abx abl pros who want to really push for personal pride or you know maybe top ranks you know number one alliance sort of thing um, and those types of scores and then hope Hope is actually insanely good. She's even better than we initially thought. So she obviously solos all of the female combat days. You just double support her. You can use her lead or Sif lead. It doesn't really matter. But she absolutely claps dick. On top of the fact that you can actually use Hope in a triple swap situation. Check this out. 
So there's an alt team. You got to pay attention to the text here, ladies and gentlemen, because there's a lot of information that I packed into these alt teams. You can, on Combat Hero Day for ABX, you can use an M'Baku lead with Hope and Valkyrie, and it's a Hope solo, and she can hit you. She can hit 13 million on, with that team. She can hit 14 million. I know it's a lot, but yeah, she can she can climb. She can climb. So, uh, you know, if you're trying to if you're trying to get some some extra value out of a character that otherwise costs more than seven thousand crystals to unlock, um, you know, keep keep that in mind. So yeah, hopefully this helps people out. Hopefully the the rewards and the structure of the rewards and sort of the, the buildup of characters encourages you and sort of inspires you to uh, push higher in ABX and ABL. Do not miss, by the way, do not miss Luna's uniform when it comes around this summer. If you want to push ABL because she is just one of the easiest she's a, she's a bucket she's a, she's the michael jordan of abx abl and um the only thing is she she you know destroys your phone my phone heats up and the, the frame rate goes to shit uh that's really the only downside aside from it being a paid uniform and then uh we'll see maybe i'm making this video now and by the end of the year we have a replacement for magneto i kind of don't see it but then again i also don't see them making magneto the meta for years and or like two years in a row that's just super weird, right? He's already been the meta for this day for over a year, for basically like a year and a half. That's insane, right? That they a year and a half they haven't replaced him. That's crazy. But yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the like button. It helps with the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.